Okay, so now that uh, I'm just uh, coming right back where we left off, and so now that we have uh, the equation for uh, force of gravity figured out, and we have it in terms of other and this, uh, now we just need to rename our our other and this. Uh, so this is the the mover that we want to affect. So we're going to just say that call that M because that's we're going to go through all the movers and uh, the mover that we're on this time is this mover so it just makes makes sense to do that. So we had this and then we had uh, this mass M mass and the other we're going to call that a tractor. So it's the mover that we're being attracted by. Okay, is are those anywhere else? Okay, and then we're going to say m dot apply force. Uh, force gravity and again like I, I keep saying uh, force gravity moves this towards other so this uh, we're gonna apply it to this mover so now we need to create an attractor and we're going to uh, do that with say just attractor equals mover and we pass in a position of velocity and acceleration. So for position, we're just going to be uncreative and put in the origin position for velocity. We're going to be uncreative and put in uh, the origin, a zero vec. And then we're going to put a, a zero vec for acceleration as well. And for the mass, um, Let's uh, let's go ahead and say uh, ATR or ATT. Uh, let's go ahead. I yeah, just spell it out: attractor mass. And we're going to put a value into our uh, component called attractor mass. That way we can affect it however we want outside of uh, outside of the code. So. This should give us, uh, this should work, I hope, and uh, first we need to make an attractor mass. And let's give it, let's say 30. Okay, so it's not bugging out for any reason. Okay, so now uh, I wanted to do it this way to show you how it bugs out. Um, I'm going to restart it. And you can see when it gets really, really close, the force of gravity is greater because the, the force of gravity depends on uh, the distance and so when the distance is really 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 small this is going to be really really large and so once it gets uh, once it gets close it's going to just slingshot it out like it does let's watch it again so you can watch for that so you can see how it's slingshotting them out you know once they get close to the attractor which is in the center well that one didn't that one did So to uh, to fix this bug, uh, what Schiffman does in his book, and what we are going to do here is we have uh, we're going to use our vector constraint that uh, that method that we put inside uh, vector methods that we're importing up here, vector methods as vn. 
So we're going to constrain, let's see how, uh, we're going to constrain this. Um, so we're going to constrain it. Uh, let's go ahead and just do that. V equals uh, VM dot, and you can see how our methods come up now. Uh, so let's vector constrain, and uh, our help function shows up down here. Uh, returns the vectors vector whose length is constrained between the variables max and min, and we have max and min right there. So let's pass in our vec and uh, the max. Uh, let's do ten and our min. Let's do five. And I haven't really played with these variables at all, so uh, if you want to do that, you can to see what happens. So let's see if it works now. Okay, it's still slingshotting it out, so let's. I did something wrong. Uh, okay, so I didn't use, I used, went ahead and used RVEC instead of V. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And now we can play around with the attractor mass. Let's bump it up, and you'll notice that it, it's going to have to. We're going to have to start it over. Uh, let's bump up uh, the number of movers as well. Uh, Thirty-six, forty—that's a lot. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so we have uh, uh, a more exciting little uh, chunk of code there. And so what we're going to do in the next uh, videos uh, is uh, eventually we'll have gravity affecting each, each mover. Uh, have gravity between all of the movers affect all of the movers.